Fabrizio Romano confirmed to us that Tuko has gonna hit to be discussed by the club of Manchester United and he's a candidate to obviously replace Eric Ten Hag. If a toilet decision is made and Eric Ten Hag is shown the exit door out of Carrington and Old Trafford. Good evening, my teammates. How are you guys? I know you're watching us from my go button hymns of Rock and David. Smash like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Rock and David is my name and hope you guys are really having fun wherever you are and we're here to bring you the latest news and information as far as all this is concerned. I'm gonna be addressing the ongoing slates on Kobe menu and you look at them and really get to know that something is not right in the minds of people because you can't tell me that a 19 year old is reason as to why England would hate to lose you know it's a goal that has five people involved the goalkeeper the right back that he's um the right back that is um Carl Walker uh Carl Palmer you get who had to track back Kobe Mainu, you know, and the clan rise five players and people have gone ahead to single isolate to singly isolate this guy and obviously throw tantrums at him because they are working for agents of certain players who are really afraid of this guy. And I'm gonna be letting you know that people I believe are really under all masterminding all this PR that is obviously aimed at really taking Kobe Mainu into a very bad mode of mind as he heads into the, into the Euros to obviously downperform to see to it that he really doesn't get back that slot. You know, Kobe Mainu, if he has a very good Euros, he's going to cement his position to that starting eleven. And I tell you, agents are afraid of certain players because they believe that this is a platform these players are supposed to use to obviously win the Balando. And I tell you, Kobe Main, you might really even get out those players that you think are really good at this into this. That's why the media is pointing at one player. Yet, when you look at that goal, it's a team goal and a team um, a team made mistake that went ahead to cost the team. So, we thank God for the gift of life, the Muslim is Barakla with Hikum, and let's see close to 400 likes, sorry, 300 likes much in this video as we discuss all that in a point. And the manager of England has gone ahead, obviously, back the guy, and he has hinted on his starting. So continue to subscribe. We want to hit 20,000 subscribers, and guys, continue to subscribe. See to it that we hit 18, and I think we are soon hitting 17,500. Um, let's obviously continue doing that in here. Let's start it off with um, Fabrizio Romano. <clears throat> He has come out and really said Man United discussed Thomas Tuchel internally this week. Thomas Tuchel is not only is not only the candidate, is not only the candidate in the event of Eric Ten Hag's departure. The club continues to take its time to decide. Now, as it stands, <coughs> United are continuing to discuss on who is supposed to be the perfect replacement of Eric Ten Hag if at all. They really consider sucking him, and. The moment I went ahead to see that continuing, it's written all over the world that they want to suck this manager. They want to suck this manager. You get? They want to suck this manager. And I tell you what, <coughs> in the due course of wanting to suck the manager, <coughs> they are looking in for possible replacements. But you have to ask yourself, <coughs> why Toko? <coughs> Tuko is a manager who failed everywhere and he was fired. He was hired by Jean Claude and fired by Jean Claude when he was really running the club of PSG. So, he best knows exactly what Thomas Tuko is all about and what Thomas Tuko can really front onto the club of Manchester United. And <clears throat> Thomas Tuko does not really align with what Sir Jim Ratcliffe went ahead to tell us that. He wants to improve the young talents. He wants to get in players that are the next big thing and they'll get improved. Thomas Tuchel, while at Bayern Munich, one of the reasons as to why they fell out with the board, even when they had reconsidered giving him a job after sacking him, I think around March, was that <clears throat> he wanted a finished product, not Jamal Musiala. You get? He never wanted the youngsters 
you know, at Bayern Munich. You get, yet it's in the DNA of Bayern Munich to obviously get in players from the academy and obviously promote them to the first team. You understand now, how come we are trusting the future of our players with such people? You get, how come we are trusting the future of our players with such people? You get, so that means Ineos doesn't know what they are doing. This is the manager who was sacked at Chelsea. He spent just, I think, one and a half seasons got sacked. He's a manager who was sacked at PSG. <clears throat> he was a manager who has been sacked at Bayern Munich. You understand? Meaning that he is a quick fix manager. And everywhere he has gone ahead of his do a quick fix, it only succeeded at Chelsea where he won them a Champions League. You get? But he's not that manager that he's known for building clubs. You get? And really raising superstars. Tell me those youngsters that Thomas Tuchel has gone ahead to improve. I don't really see him as that manager that can come in through to obviously take us to the level where I believe Manchester United should be at. You know, this is another quick fix. And if at all they get him as the new manager for the club of Manchester United, it will be a quick fix. And I tell you, he's not going to last here. And Dezabi might last at Man United longer than this guy. Because for Dezabi, he has a reputation of really getting these young kids from the academy, improve them and really mold them into big players. Ten Hag has gone ahead to do it and I don't know why they are not really making that decision of keeping him here. And my worry is that through making very many mistakes, they might make a mistake that might really take us down the drain for the next seven years. I tell you, because there is this arrogancy that they are really carrying that has gone ahead obviously make them think that they're the alphas and omegas of football and they shouldn't be listening to fans look at how the glaze look at how the glazers were running Manchester united they brought in louis van hal the fans loved him and by the time they sucked him like 70 percent of the fan base was like suck louis van hal get in jose Mourinho. you know i was one of the few Though by the time I never really had a YouTube channel, but I remember my friend called Buddha Francis. I told him, <clears throat> I don't really, I never wanted United to lose Louis Van Hal. We had gone, we had gone ahead to get a philosophy. We had gone ahead to bring in young stars. And he had gone, had gone ahead to reach his third year of really claiming for what we call the trophies. Because he had told the bosses or the Glazers that, give me three years, give me three years. In the third year, I'll get you a trophy because he believes two years are building for the team and then the third year is to present a trophy. They sacked him and by that time I was among the 30% that never wanted him to get sacked. 70% they wanted to sack the player. 70% went to sack the manager. Jose Mourinho was the fan favorite because he knew it that they knew it that they had gone ahead obviously do it elsewhere and came in through. By the time he was sacked <coughs> 75% or 80% of the fans were like, it's high time he went. They brought in Oligona Sosha. Very many people were like, he's just going to be an interim and you're going to be appointing a new manager to take Man United further. Guess what happened? <clears throat> Oligona Sosha came in through, won 11 games, I think. Out of the 10, he won, he won 9 and he was given a contract in which most people said it was a mistake. He had a very good debut season, 2019-2020, went back to the Champions League, 2020-2021, we qualified for the Champions League again, you understand? And we finished second, 2021-2022 season, things went out of his hands and he lost the job in November. And by the time he got sacked, all fans were like, the guy should be sacked. Then there came Ten Hag. He was a fan favorite. The Glazers wanted to obviously bring in Pochettino, but the fans were like, we want Eric Ten Hag. And the Glazers listened to the voice of the fans. And by the way, the Glazers have been listening to the voice of the fans, especially when it comes to the managers, you know? And this time round, we are getting in Ineos with a president of Ineos who came in through saying that or the CEO of Ineos, 
claiming that he listened to the fans and he's not listening to the fans. I tell you, if the Glazers were the ones still running this club, they wouldn't have gone ahead to sack Eric Ten Hag because for them what they want to see the fans, emotions, backing the manager. And for the very first time, we had a very bad run, but the fans were like, let's keep Eric Ten Hag. You understand? So, <clears throat> Ineos is heading into the third week because today, it's now two weeks ever since we went ahead to win the FA Cup. No decision has gone ahead to be made. Tell me, what better word describes that level of incompetency than this? That is the highest level of incompetency that you'll ever, ever, ever find in a club like Manchester United. You know? So, they are slow doers, and I don't think that Thomas Tuchel is really that guy that can come here and really excite me. No way. That name will never excite me. Even if Thomas Tuchel takes over this job, he'll never excite these fans of Manchester United. Unless otherwise, he wins them a Champions League, a Premier League, you get. But will he do that with the squad we are really having at the club of Manchester United? Because for Eric Ten Hag, if he's going the third in, third, in his third season, you would um, authoritatively ask him a Premier League trophy because three years down the drill, he needs to obviously rise up. And we've all gone ahead to say to it that he can really raise very many points. If he can stabilize that team and minimize on the injuries, Ten Hag can be a manager that can fetch us close to 80 or 90 points. But for Tuko, you are not going to tell him that, please, I want a trophy. But the reason as to why we are going to come in through and really ask him for a trophy is because we feel like the manager we are having right now, Eric Ten Hag, had gone ahead to reach what we call the fruition stage, you know? And in the problems we had at Manchester United, the youngsters like Ganacho, Kambuala, you know, Kobe Mainu, Rasmus Hoyland stood up to the occasion and saved the club and fought for the badge. And in the FA Cup final, they are the two people that went ahead to score those two goals. So, I'm this kind of person who is really very, 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 very positive on to keeping Eric Ten Hag. And Ineos has gone ahead to show us that they are really, 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 really badly off at their job, if at all. And they've gone ahead to reach the 8th of June. And they haven't gone ahead to make a decision on who is going to be the manager for the club of Manchester United. So, we wait and see who is really up. And it looks like we are going to be back into the discussion a lot. Now, let's go to England. England yesterday was beaten by Iceland. Very many people have come out, obviously, slate Kobe menu. And I'm asking... Why are why is the media really going after this kid? I've gonna hate to know one thing. <laughs> there are positions of players at stake. And they're using their PR, the agents of these players, I think. I'm not saying it's the fact, but I'm telling you the truth that I really think it's true. Okay, let me say I'm alleging that they are they are people down there at the club sorry in the national team having players afraid of how much talented this guy is they are just afraid of the guy <laughs> no doubt they are afraid of kobe menu and you know the players i'm not going to mention names who play in the position where he plays they are afraid of the quality this boy is going to have to bring to the team because england don't have any player who is like kobe menu for Carl Palmer, you can compare him with Bukayo Saka. I think Carl Palmer is better. Ebelechi Eze, you know, Phil Foden, you know. But tell me a player in that English squad that is like Kobe Mainu. He's the no one. So there is no one that is like him. That's why these people are really afraid of him. And I tell you, you are going to see the PR machinery of the agents, of the players that feel like if Kobe Mainu really has a very good Euro tournament, He's going to cement his position into that midfield. And it looks like him and Declan Rice and Judy Bellingham are untouchable in that team. And I tell you, when they are playing against Isit Sabia in their opening game, he's going to be the man doing the job there. <clears throat> so, those people are really trying to really put out, put down this guy. But I know he's that guy that has really a strong heart. 
and he has a heart of he has a heart of steel and i know he will obviously overcome this and to show you that he's a man who is really strong after the game of iceland <coughs> kobe menu had the following to say we england know the quality we have in the changing room and now we just have to show the fans we are good enough and we can compete in germany i think going into a tournament after a loss can be a good thing that's what kobe Menu is going to to say by the way it's good because the players will have to look into themselves <clears throat> the management will have to look into itself and find what we call a better solution for this guy as kobe Menu. so for Menu as he is and the entire squad they are really strong and going to Germany with the loss. It's really great. And if at all they win the tournament, it will be one of those losses that everyone will be really reminiscing about or pointing at that they deserve to get that win. And it was a blessing in disguise for them to lose to Iceland and go to Germany with a full charge. That's what Kobe Mena is going to hit to say. He's a really strong guy. And he added and said, it's been a pretty few weeks. Everything happened so quick. I'm taking one game at a time and focusing on the big deadline ahead. So, he has played so much football. Let's all admit. But he has deserved to play so much football. And when you look at the quality that the English side is really having, if you see to it that it's really into that ilk, you better understand that a lot is really happening on the side of Kobe Manu. So, we wait and see how that pans out. And Gary Southgate has gone ahead and obviously said the following. When he was asked on whether this guy will start in the Euros, he said, Menu starting at the Euros? We would have no hesitation to do so. Obviously, unless you hate Kobe Menu, but the lad is special. He's a special guy. And in the midfield, <clears throat> I tell you, you can talk about any player in the world right now that plays in the midfield. The only sabotage he might get is that if at all Ten Hag is sacked and the next manager just finds himself in a position of not really wanting to use him and improving him because we need to get in a manager who can improve Kobe Mani. Ten Hag is going to have to do his job and he was willing to improve him more and more and more to turn him into a player that we all want to see all the time. But these problems at Manchester United that are going to have to affect our young stars, you know? The likes of <coughs> Yanuzai, Anda Moyes, Van Hal comes in through, throws him under the bus. You know? Then Yeseli Hingard, Rashford, Anton Martial, um, Bostowicz, you know? Angel Gomez, and very many others. Mourinho comes in through, he takes in Twanzebe, Scott McTominay. Rashford really benefited under Mourinho because he's a hard working player. You understand? <clears throat> and we've seen the likes of st the, the other stars that one Zebes get affected by the coming in of Oliguna Sosha, the Fosu Mesa. Do you remember Fosu Mesa under uh, Louis Van Hal? He really played very, very well and he played some wonderful football that you can all really admit that it was really at levels that we all needed to do and really get. You understand? So I find it very hard to really resonate with sucking Eric Ten Hag because I feel that Ganacho, Rasmus Hoyland, Kobe Menu are really going to get affected into that ilk. So, that's what I had for you in here for you. Tell me your thoughts about Thomas Tuko to United Talks in the comment section below. What do you make about it? I want to know your broad reasoning up on it. Then, what are your thoughts about Kobe Menu's criticism from the English media over that goal that England would hate to call concede? when they are playing against a team called Iceland. Yet that team, yet that goal had hallmarks of the following names. Kobe Menu, Rice, Aaron Ramsdale, Carl Palmer, and Kyle Walker. So guys, first video of the day. May the living to God bless you abundantly. Rock and David remains my name. I sign out for now. See you later. And I'm going to really be returning in two hours from now to obviously bring you more and more stories that i'm going to hit to develop around the club of manchester united good evening and euros are starting 
on is it friday or thursday because today is eighth saturday friday euros are kickstarting off in germany and be waiting to see which team is going to be playing which team and what results are really going to be showing up i'm excited to watch very many players that Manchester united are being linked to in the summer transfer window barak laufikum bye bye